uh, uh, moderators and chairpersons. Uh, now, what is the most difficult uh, part concerning the chemo um, uh, radiotherapy of cervical uh, cancer, considering everything that has been said? Uh, we must. So, according, well, you know statistics, and there is no need to go back to statistics, but well, look, there is so much growth of the incidence, 24% over the past 10 years, and about 55%, that's the second and the third stage. That's a lot, and that's bad. And it's very difficult to deal with the second and the third stage. It's not the first stage which can be easily treated. And, well, of course, it's the age, uh, under 35, 46% of patients under 35. Uh, that's a Lot. If even five years ago, we did not have that, and today we can observe that. Um, so, um, what what can we uh, do? How can we treat? Let's go back to recommendations. We all work together with you within the framework of the insurance medicine. And insurance medicine requires uh, observation of certain rules and norms. Uh, we have to comply with recommendations. If you look at these recommendations, when is it possible to have radiotherapy? Uh, uh, one a uh, uh, stage uh, just with uh, Roska. And uh, uh, then uh, that uh, the means of recommendations and uh, notice that uh, according to the indications, then starting with 1B1, uh, we get either radiotherapy or chemo uh, radiotherapy. But it is specified that bo in both types of specific recommendations, the high risks is um, uh, chemo radiotherapy, uh, intermediate level. An adjuvant uh, radiotherapy and uh, low risk uh, adjuvant both. So I'm not going to talk about surgery at break because so many spoke about surgery uh, before me. But as for the uh, 2B stage, uh, we can see that the it's the uh, chemo radiotherapy that can be um, uh, used uh, separately. We spoke about uh, no adjuvant. Yes, it is recommended, and you can see that it is recommended for. Uh, one uh, B2 and on the basis of the uh, platinum drugs. Platinum. So, um, with further extirpation of uter uterus uh, of the third type, so non adjuvant uh, therapy, chemotherapy, uh, has a place in life, but practically nothing, nothing is written about uh, uh, adjuvant uh, chemotherapy. Well, of course, every single time we have to um, um, somehow change this situation. Uh, uh, look at the staging and how it has changed with the adoption of the final classification um, uh, of 2018 with FIGO. Uh, the horizontal spread is uh, done away with. We have no right now uh, to consider that with the first A stage. Now, secondly, the first B stage is divided into three sub-stages, and uh, this needs to be considered. And the third C stage today uh, should be um, um, clearly indicated uh, how this diagnosis has been reached if there are uh, li lympho nodes on the basis of clinical visual visualization or histological materials. So this is a new type of staging, and this will definitely make us change our attitude uh, to the um, uh, methods of treatment of uh, uh, cervical cancer, considering the spread and the degree of spread, and the work group will definitely um, keep working on that. And will come up with new recommendations by 2020. All these recommendations are expected to change once in three years. Now, as for the treatment and chemotherapy, and how do we apply that? As for an neoadjuvant uh, chemotherapy, quite a lot has been said. It works effectively. Uh, two, uh, well, one and two courses, and it definitely provides very good results. Um, with the um, uh, later coming radiotherapy, uh, one uh, moment. Uh, uh, therapy is also possible. As for adjuvant uh, chemotherapy, we still have a lot of questions so we need to ask, and they need to be tackled not only by our researchers, but uh, there must be also uh, randomized um, um, 
trials uh, connected with that. We tried to analyze all the results, and here is what we have. Yes, the use of chemotherapy, uh, well, single-time chemotherapy, what does it provide? Um, um, uh, survival by 16% increase of that, no matter what kind of the platinum drug you use, and its effectiveness uh, depends on the uh, stage of the disease. And uh, our office, Yelena Grigorievna, you said we're not referring to them, but here they are. You can find their names. If Kravitz says that it's by 8% within the first two years, Kralina Kreli. says that there is no difference whether chemotherapy was used or not used. And uh, uh, consequently, no adjuvant uh, chemotherapy and radiotherapy. Now, there are again quite contradictory data. If non adjuvant um, um, uh, chemotherapy with radiotherapy provides an uh, 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 increase of survival rate by 7%, according to some authors, then others say that it's necessary to consider the size of the tumor and the um, lymph nodes, metastasis, and the volume should not be. Uh, of a thirty percent of what uh, is operable, and if chemotherapy is used in the non-adjuvant um, uh, uh, course, then in twenty uh, in oh uh, seven it was demonstrated that there are practical difference. In twenty fifteen, uh, we uh, were able to get uh, the other results uh, concerning the survival by fifteen percent, and uh, that's um, in the work of a certain author. What are uh, uh, the reasons for these? Discrepancies. It appears that it's um, because of the um, lack of the homogeneity of the uh, groups, of the um, uh, control groups, uh, different regimens. Uh, um, it's the fact whether the combined uh, uh, treatment is used or not, uh, what the radicality of the combined uh, treatment is, and there is practically no information about the methods of radiotherapy. And so for today, we uh, still have a standard, uh, uh, it's the uh, uh, chemo radiotherapy, um, and uh, several groups of studies demonstrated that uh, it's effective to use platinum drugs uh, uh, along with radiotherapy. And uh, before we uh, decide on uh, the treatment, whether it is no adjuvant chemotherapy, um, single time um, chemotherapy, or uh, adjuvant uh, uh, chemotherapy, we must consider this particular model of four factors, which makes it possible for, for us to consider the uh, size of the, uh, uh, the histological forms and the invasion. And uh, all this should be in the basis of uh, what we do. We must always have the individualized, individualized approach to every single case of cervical cancer. Here is what I would like to draw your attention to. Uh, that is a HPV. HPV, uh, this is a very high level um, uh, cancerogenic factor. Uh, a, there is a, a violation of the control of pro proliferation. And uh, there is a lot of discussions these days, and the scientific studies are dedicated exactly to this pathology logical factor and the uh, virus um has a very significant role in the development of cervical cancer. As for the uh, principles of radiotherapy in adjuvant uh, mode uh, or independently or together with uh, uh, chemoradiotherapy, so we must always individualize uh, the uh, uh, doses, the uh, carefully planning them using the traditional and non traditional methods of radiation and considering, of course, uh, the anatomic and topographic uh, um, uh, characteristics of the tumor and other organs, but the doses should be no less than 80 gray. Some uh, these summed up doses with a small tumor, these doses can be up to 90 gray. Why is that so? Because practically in all the centers these days there are devices with the um, uh, for the uh, radiotherapy, the state of the art apparatus. But as for the time over, um, the, uh, so the, with time, with prolonged time, the effect decreases. Well, we can expand that. One of the slides, there was a bottle demonstrated uh, when the, uh, the uh, 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 radiation was uh, uh, switched on. But the doses in this case on the, uh, do on the lymph nodes should not be above uh, 5 uh, um, gray. And we should also not forget about the protection of the bone marrow. 
According to the clinical guidelines of the Ministry of Health that we need to adhere to, uh, planning must be uh, conducted on the basis of uh, MRT. So MRT is desirable. CT is possible only when MRT is not possible. Confirm uh, confirmant uh, radiology of the uh, pelvis and uh, regional metastasis zones uh, requires um, two grays per day, five times a week. Regional lymph nodes uh, typical for the um, cervix uh, must be considered uh, with uh, the margin of 15 to 20 millimeters uh, between uh, the uh, therapy site and the nodes. Um, we can use uh, the two field or four field boost technology. Uh, so four fields, um, a four field methodology can uh, can affect the uh, regional metastasis zone. Internal radiotherapy is probably by far the most complex method. 2D uh, images is, uh, this is a 2D image, point A, uh, the intersection of the ureter and the um, uterine, uh, uterine artery. So these uh, points um, are registered in the guidelines. Uh, however, if you're using 3D planning, you need to consider the uh, clinical size of the target, uh, target, the clinical volume of the tumor, the risk zone, and the metastasis area. Metastasis area. Um, and don't forget about um, five millimeter margins uh, towards the bladder and uh, 10 mi uh, millimeters towards the uterus, uh, 20 millimeters towards the perimetrium. And you end up in a fantastic zone that covers all the necessary uh, points for radiation therapy. However, considering the uh, possibilities um, available to uh, conformant radiotherapy, uh, we need to uh, we need to analyze. We need to take into account the summary uh, radiological um, burden. It needs to be within the limits of six degrees, and we're currently using new units um, to uh, graze five times a week. Uh, these are the units of FQD2. If you have a long uh, experience of uh, radiotherapy, you understand that the units that we have been using have changed over time. Uh, so for conforming uh, radiotherapy, uh, the uh, doses are increasing. They're now 10 grays more than uh, the ones required by conventional methodologies. Let me present our data based on uh, 375 uh, cases of cervical cancer, stages two and three. The patients were uh, segregated into three groups. One received a combined radiotherapy in the traditional regimen. The second group uh, received cisplatin, uh, cisplatin and uh, fluor uracil uh, together with um, uh, radiotherapy and uh, chemo radiotherapy. Why did we use uh, topo topot again for the uh, last group? Because it contains uh, it combine, contains hypoxy induced factor, and it has a more positive effect on the affected on the involved tissues compared with other medications. Clinical characteristics of um, the clinical uh, features of uh, the cases. Most of our patients were. Uh, aged uh, 30 to 44. Uh, most of them were at stage three of the disease. Uh, 
the uh, as far as uh, the growth um, form was concerned, the uh, uh, groups were very similar. Uh, most of our uh, patients had tumors of uh, uh, 22, 24 cubical centimeters. Uh, parametral infiltration, uh, no difference, uh, no reliable difference between the groups. As far as the uh, lymph node status, positive uh, lymph nodes were detected in the third group, 75% uh, of the patients displaying this phenomenon, uh, the sign. Uh, full PCR was achieved in 75% of the patients in uh, group uh, in the group receiving neoadjuvant chemotherapy plus uh, radiotherapy. However, for stage two patients, we received fairly good results. So combined radiotherapy resulted in 79%. Uh, and stage two resulted in 87%. Stage three, also good results, 66. However, these differences are statistically not reliable, not significant. But they're high, nevertheless. So it is possible to use neoadjuvant and uh, chemo uh, radiotherapy, which yields fairly good effects of treatment. Uh, Antified and mixed forms. In mixed forms, neoadjuvant therapy is uh, seemed to perform better. Uh, these are our data, the data that we have. So in case of mixed forms, uh, we received fairly positive outcomes. Tumor volume, in terms of tumor volume, uh, the outcomes were also more positive for neoadjuvant therapy whenever uh, neoadjuvant therapy was used. At stage 3B, neoadjuvant therapy also um, has benefits um, around 80% uh, for uh, bilateral uh, metastases of lymphatic nodes. So groups are quite sizable. Uh, however, uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, the groups uh, may not be sizable enough, but statistics is statistics, and uh, you cannot change that. Um, the first publications by uh, Larissa Colomets uh, show that um, human papillomavirus can be highly aggressive, in uh, especially aggressive in women with cervical cancer. So one of the uh, next stages is uh, of research is the research into a human papilloma, uh, papilloma virus uh, that blocks E6 and E7 proteins and precludes uh, healthy cells from uh, restoring normally. Thank you for your attention. Dear colleagues, one or two questions uh, to ask Ludmilla. Ludmilla, I've got one. Uh, we use uh, guidelines based on randomized uh, trials, foreign randomized trials, but um, large experience has been accumulated by Russia. I agree with you. Um, in, from your standpoint, what do we need to do to uh, conduct a randomized trial? As pay, uh, at least for one stage. We need to create a working group and we need to develop a tactic for um, one stage. So let us take two, stage two and identify uh, parameters for a randomized trial. Because uh, many works, many trials, um, international trials are available. Uh, we know of them and we know what criteria need to be researched. The age, the stage, the uh, length of follow-up period, uh, what chemotherapy should be used, what radiotherapy should be used. So the working group must initiate this trial 
and its parameters, specify its parameters. Very good data are now available for embolization and uh, chemotherapy combined with embolization. The data obtained by the Herzen Institute are very good. Our institute has very good data. Professor Kedrova has very good data. So you need to think about those things. You need to customize them, personalize them. Uh, and it is highly relevant that at least one such large trial is conducted uh, involving different centers treating cervical cancer, for example, because cervical cancer uh, is a more relevant um, problem compared with the uterine body. Not to the microphone. Not to the microphone. I think that at the first stages, proton therapy uh, will be good because well, there are no devices available for proton therapy. For metastases, I would say yes, especially if those are recurring metastases in different regions, uh, especially in the uh, cervical lymph nodes uh, in the vicinity of the cervix. Um, I read one article by Korean, no Chinese researchers who try to do uh, something uh, proton therapy wise uh, for cancer patients. Uh, I did register that the article was there, but uh, I don't remember what it was about.